Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack was the name of a bright boy who lived with his mother, a widow, in a little house far from the homes of other people. Jack was lively and full of fun, perhaps a little careless and heedless, and so caused his mother some anxiety at times, but was smart, good-hearted, and always happy. Just at the time this story opens, which was ages ago, the widow and her son were very poor, so poor that when the storm came that destroyed their little garden, they were left without anything to eat. Jack did not trouble about this, but his mother knew they must sell their good, fat, spotted cow, to get food for the coming winter, as she thought Jack too small a boy to get a living for them both, so she sent him away with the cow to the market town and underscore told him to get as much as he could for her, as they must have enough to last them until next. Summer brought a crop from the little garden. Leading the good, spotted cow, Jack went merrily along, until he met a jolly peddler, who was singing a comic song as he tossed some bright, colored beans from hand to hand. Jack took a great fancy to these beans, and asked the peddler if he would give him some. That I will, said the peddler, all I have of them, if you will hand me over the good, spotted cow you have there. Done, said Jack, as he handed the halter to the jolly peddler man. Jack was full of glee, as he went back toward his home with his hat full of shining beans, that seemed to sparkle and glow with color, as he ran his fingers through them, take catch the light. When his poor mother heard what Jack had done she was very sad and angry with the heedless boy and giving his hat a knock. She sent the bright beans far and wide, about the yard, in all directions, and they were lost among the weeds and grass, so they had not even a bean to show for their good old spotted cow, of which the widow had hoped so much. That night Jack was sent to bed without his supper, and with the dark, sadness settled down about the lonely little home. When Jack put his head out of the window the next morning, he was surprised to find that a mighty bean vine had sprung up from the yard where the beans had fallen, and was growing fast toward the sky. He rushed downstairs and out of the door where his mother stood, and springing into the lower branches of the bean vine, up he went, above the window, above the door and finally out of sight, being lost to his mother's view and the twigs and leaves over him. Mainly she called him to come back, he was so excited he did not hear her voice, but mounted higher and higher at every step, and soon pushed past the white clouds that drifted across the sky. The widow sat down and wept in her despair, for she thought, her last and greatest treasure was gone forever. Meanwhile Jack climbed and climbed, until he was out of sight of the cottage, and even the earth was blotted out beneath him, as the silver lying clouds drifted about the vine below. On went Jack it seemed to him for half a day. Never tiring, he climbed with stout heart and sturdy limbs till finally the top of the vine went over the edge of a new and strange land above the sky, and Jack stepped out upon a curious bleak and barren country. A jagged road led from where he stood, to a bare and lonely castle upon a rocky hill. Suddenly beside him there appeared a strange looking, little old lady, who had a most kindly face, but who looked severely at Jack. Good morning, said Jack, politely. It's afternoon, said the little old lady, as she looked the boy over from head to foot. Who are you, and what are you doing here? I'm Jack, and I'm just looking around, he answered. Can I do anything for you? No, she said, as her face softened, but you can do much for yourself. Jack, and you're good fairy, and I sent you the magic beans, that grew into this wonderful bean vine. Now pay attention, and do as I tell you, and all will be well. In yonder castle lives a giant, a great, big, burly fellow, who scares everyone, and threatens to eat them. This he never has done yet, and he never will do. He is nothing but a big, boasting bully. Years ago he stole from your father a great lot of money, and I want you to go and get it back. Don't be afraid of him, but put on a bold front, and you will get your own from this big fellow. If you need help, I will help you. With this she kissed her hand to Jack, courtesy, and was gone. Jack did exactly as he was told, and marched with steady step to the door of the castle, and rapped loudly. He had no sooner done so than the door flew open, and he was in a long and gloomy hall, at the end of which, was the giant, seated at a table. The giant was very tall and looked terribly fierce. When he saw Jack approaching he began to breathe hard through his teeth, and pound the floor with the great club he held in his right hand. But Jack, mindful of what was told him, sprang boldly forward, and, with a hop, skip and a jump, was beside the giant on the table, with another leap he was on the bottom of the giant's cup which stood, upside down before him, and so was on a level with the giant's face. The giant was surprised at this sudden move, but, catching his breath, 
He gave a terrible roar that made the windows and doors rattle, shouting in a voice of thunder, I'll eat you up. No you won't, either, shouted Jack, as loud as he could, as he shook his finger under the astonished giant's nose, and what is more, you will not eat anybody else up. I know you, and all about you, and I am tired of your nonsense. You are a big bluffer, and you can't scare me a bit. I am here to take you down a peg, and teach you to be decent, and what is more, I want the money you stole from my father, do you understand? Jack paused for breath, but he kept the giant pin with his evil eye. A great change came over the giant, and the moment he was as meek as a lamb, he gasped out, well, 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 it is fearful to be talked to like this, after having my own way for so many years, I don't know what to do. I'll tell you what to do, said Jack, you give up that money, or you'll come down to earth, go to work, and be honest. But, I've spent all the money, said the giant, and he lay up distressed. Well, you are a nice man, said Jack, the only thing you can do is to take up that axe in the corner, pack your grip, and come with me, and I will make a man of you. All right, said the giant, I know I've been a very bad man, I really wish to be better, and I will commence by paying back what I owe your father, but I don't see how I can do it without a cent. I will attend to that, said Jack, who had an idea. So the giant packed up his few things in his grip sack, shouldered his axe, and went with Jack down the vine, to the little cottage yard. The first thing you do is to cut down that bean vine, said Jack. But I can't go home if I do, said the giant. I don't want you to, and you won't want to either, when you have been here a while, was the boy's reply. So the giant laid low the great bean vine with his axe. Of course, Jack's mother was startled, to see so large a giant coming home with her Jack. But when she saw that the boy was safe and sound, and that he managed the giant so easily, her fears vanished, and she bade him welcome. She had some doubts as to where to put him to sleep, and how to feed him, but Jack said, Leave that to me, mother, I came out all right with the cow, and the beans, and I will with the giant, you'll see. We are going to the fair now, and when we come back we will have all the money we want. So Jack and the giant started to walk to the neighboring town where a fair was being held. When they came to the place it was evening, so they slipped into the fairgrounds without being seen, as all the visitors had gone home for the day. Jack had no trouble in securing a large tent for his giant, in which they both slept soundly that night. In the morning, bright and early, when the crowds began to flock to the fair, Jack was standing outside of the door of the tent, shouting, Come! 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 Come on! Come all! Come in and bring the children to see the greatest wonder of the age, the only living giant now in Cap equals Tivity, only ten small pieces of copper to see the biggest, the grandest man on earth. The people had never seen a giant outside of a picture book, before, so the coppers poured into Jack's pocket, and the people crowded the tent all day long, and when evening came Jack and the giant had a goodly sum to divide. In fact, while the fair lasted, the giant did a thriving business, for crowds went to see him every day. When the fair was over, off went manager Jack, with his giant, to other towns, where fairs were being held, and repeated their successful entertainments. Jack would stand at the door and take tickets until the tent was filled, when he would trot out the giant upon a stage at one end of the tent, and tell the people the story of his life, after which the giant would give an exhibition of his great strength and agility. Between fairs, Jack would go back to the old home and give the money that was made to his mother. As time went on, they grew very rich, and this is the way the giant paid back what he had taken from Jack's father. When winter came the giant pitched his tent near Jack's house and was a great help to the widow about the place, as he was so big, strong and nimble, that he could do the work of sixteen men in less than a jiffy. For years Jack and the giant stayed together, as partners, in the show business, and the giant never ceased to be glad that he had met Jack, and had given up the lazy life of a robber. <laughs>